Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm going to be doing something that I have not done before, and that will be conducting a phone interview with a literary mastermind. Uh, this literary mastermind, his name is Glenn Russell. He is a Goodreads book reviewer who ranks uh, 42nd in uh, Best Book Reviewers in America during the last 12 months. He ranks number 66th in the last 12 months in the world. And in the U.S., he ranks number 81 of all time. Glenn is a resident of Philadelphia, but he was raised in my home state of New Jersey. He was a first-generation college graduate, majoring in philosophy at LaSalle University. Uh, he worked for an insurance company. He also worked for a publishing company. And in addition to that, he, uh, he played uh, medieval and renaissance music in addition to writing microfiction and a semi-autobiographical novel about his experiences working in an insurance company. In addition, he performed in theater. And three years ago, in order to get back into writing, he began writing book reviews, which can be found on Goodreads. We're going to bring him on board. Hello, this is Glenn. Hello, Glenn. Uh, this is Josh Caparelli from Goodreads. And literary gladiators. Oh, hi. Hi, hi. How you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? Alrighty. Alrighty. Uh, we are on. Uh, we're filming right now, so uh, we can begin right now if uh, that interests you. Uh, now is great. So you can pose any question you gave me to you, so I'd be happy to answer anything you have to offer. Excellent. Uh, let's begin uh, with uh, Goodreads. Uh, I think one thing that people will notice when they approach your channel is that uh, you only write book reviews for books that you highly recommend, and everything is five stars. Uh, yes, that's right. It's my task that I know other reviewers will can books and uh, uh, look at books in a negative way, but what I do, and I have been consistent with this, is that when I review a book, Oh, I think that that's exactly how people should be uh, approaching uh, literature uh, if they're looking for such a uh, great experience. And good books are pretty much worth uh, people's time more so than fluff that they're really not going to get into. Well, but uh, I also wanted to ask, uh, what percentage of your reading includes uh, uh, five-star books? Uh, for instance, if you read 100 books in a year, how many do you think would be five star? And the books that I'm reviewing is that uh, 
Oh, excellent. Because uh, I tend, out of, if I read about 100 books, I would say only 20 or 25 of them would be five stars. But I guess that's because I would review a, a good book and give it four stars, even if I felt that it was worth somebody's time. And what you're saying is, uh, if you feel that it's worth somebody's time, regardless, it's a five-star read. Mm. I, I would agree with that uh, notion. Uh, probably not going to change the way I uh, review, but either way, I think that it is uh, a great way to celebrate uh, somebody's uh, grand accomplishment and uh, what they have done for the particular book, and uh, hence it would be worth their time to read it and uh, pick up an impression of their own. That's right. Uh, for instance, I review uh, modern classic. William Gaddis wrote a book about the American experience with a focus on American business. The title of the book is J.R. And what it is, J.R. is about a, a kid who's uh, in uh, uh, eighth grade, and it turns out he's a financial genius. <laughs> and he's able to work his, uh, he's from a lower middle class family, Ooh. I think that four to five minutes is a perfect amount of time to uh, make your way through and digest a review. It's not too light, but at the same time, it's not too complicated uh, because you don't want something that's going to uh, turn people away, but on the other hand, uh, something that is, it was good, is... Uh, it's just not, uh, it takes away the uh, impression that you have. Uh, you're not, you want something that, you want to know why you should 
take the time to read. Uh, I think that what you were telling me about J.R., I may very well put that on my list of books to read. Uh, even if it's uh, 900 pages, it's, uh, it may take time, but if I'm going to sit down and enjoy it, I, I feel relatively convinced after what you had to say about it. Yeah, I think that that is a great, uh, that really is uh, quite nice. Uh, I, I, I'm in this, uh, I'm in my giant uh, li or I'm in my library right now, and I feel that I'm going to leave this world and having not read many of the books. So, uh, the idea of a book review uh, that gives you uh, some kind of idea is quite a pleasant experience, but uh, if there's something that really grabs you, then I feel that you can't help yourself but go forward with uh, picking it up. Hmm. 
Mm. That is quite. Uh, that uh, leads me to the. Uh, I I've noticed that you uh, explore the philosophical elements of what you're reading. You read a lot of uh, works of uh, philosophy. Uh, you mag majored in philosophy. I think that, yeah, I think that every reviewer is supposed to uh, bring what they have to uh, the table, per se, uh, and I feel that you being uh, a philosophy major and what you have shared is quite uh, magnificent, uh, and uh, I would ask, uh, how do you feel that uh, somebody can get a better understanding of philosophy through the uh, literature that they read, because uh, philosophy is uh, one of the critical approaches we went over in uh, the particular classes that we took that had to do with uh, approaches to literature. Schopenhauer in the historical context of philosophy and also the 
And what was uh, Schopenhauer's area of concentration? That is quite, uh, and, and his philosophy is accessible for the uh, modern day reader, too. I think that that really would encourage people to explore the uh, philosophical area of what the literature has to offer. Uh, uh, you also mentioned that he influenced uh, uh, French uh, writers, which uh, I have uh, a question on here about that because uh, I just finished uh, French February, which was a, uh, a reading challenge I set for myself. Uh, what areas of French literature interest you and who do you feel is best for a beginner that's looking to explore uh, that cultural area? funny that you mentioned it because I actually have a copy of uh, French Decadent Tales. I haven't gotten to it yet, but uh, after what you've had to say, I would, I'll have a greater chance at uh, approaching it now. I started, I read the great French short stories uh, that Dover Thrift uh, published this month, which, same area, but uh, Oxford is quite a remarkable uh, publishing house. It has uh, been a book that I've been referring to for at least three or four years mm. since I discovered it. It is it, that rich with all of its insights, all of its selections. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I'll definitely uh, explore that uh, area. And for and you personally, uh, is those authors from that collection interest you the most? I don't know too much French either. Quite remarkable. And let me say, uh, uh, before I forget, another thing about getting back on the subject of reviewing is, this is I reviewed probably about 20 or 30 or 40 of the uh, French writers that I'm talking about, uh, not only in anthologies, but individual stories by Zeki de Maupassant, and mm. also uh, a number of books by the authors that I just cited. Mm -hmm. But uh, in addition to a conventional style review, and a review that couples quotes with my observations, and also in addition to the thematic approach, there are some reviews, not a lot, but there are some reviews that I have written that by the nature of the book, I felt it lends itself to a compressed, a super compressed uh, review, where instead of having an 800, page, uh, 800 word review, I have maybe just a two or three hundred word review. I would say that that is fitting. Uh, you're talking about this is for shorter books or just books that you haven't, you don't really have as uh, much to say about? Sometimes that's the uh, motive you have, and I think that people can definitely uh, take that route to uh, looking at a particular uh, book. Uh, especially, uh, I especially feel that you don't want to give too much away, and if you feel that a uh, small amount of details is better, then by all means, I think that uh, less can truly be more. Thank you. 
that's definitely part of the adventure is to let them figure out many of the details and any hint at a particular clue is going to tamper with their uh, approach to the uh, experience that they have reading it. So I think that you uh, make a very good point. Was there uh, anything else you had wanted to say on that uh, particular topic? And I think that based off of the numbers on Goodreads, not that numbers really uh, mean uh, too much as long as you are doing what you love, uh, those numbers that you have uh, among the uh, top hundred reviewers in the U.S. and in the world are quite remarkable. And you're doing it the right way, and it's showing, which it may not, the top 10 are probably, they're YA and fantasy, uh, more than likely, but uh, the fact that you're doing it with uh, classics and just moder uh, just things that you enjoy reading, uh, and then seeing that uh, turn into results is uh, impressive. Uh, and uh, many of my uh, mutual friends uh, who hopefully are watching this song, uh, from Booktube uh, will uh, get something out of it. Oh, it's uh, my pleasure, and uh, I'm, I'm honored. I'm 